Shana Tava, everybody. It's wonderful to see all of you here. Um, if you were in services here this morning or at um, the main sanctuary last night, you heard Rabbi Bookdahl, um sermon. She chose the most important day of the Jewish year to talk about the challenges and opportunities for the Jewish community. It wasn't an accident that Rabbi Bookdahl chose to speak on the word speak, right? Um, to to um, cho chose to speak about the opportunities that are facing us now as we welcome increasing numbers of people who are choosing to be in Jewish families and choosing to identify with our people, either formally or informally. She chose to talk with us about intermarriage and conversion because I believe she senses the possibility of a paradigm shift away from anxiety about the changing nature of the Jewish community as fully 75% of non-Orthodox Jews choose to marry people who aren't Jewish, toward a recognition that we have a wonderful and rich tradition to share with people who really want to be part of the Jewish people. I had an opportunity to talk to these five panelists, um, and I can just tell you that um, I was blown away by their stories, and I know you will be too. We're going to talk with these five graduates of our Center for Exploring Judaism program, their backgrounds could not be more different from one another. I think that's fair to say. Um, but each made a decision to dig deep into the tradition and to convert to Judaism. Mark Fillenbaum grew up in a non-denominational household celebrating Christian holidays. In 2018, he completed Central's Exploring Judaism program and converted in September of 2019. Later that year, he married his now wife, Zara. Are you here? Is Zara here? There you are. Hi there. Um, in a ceremony at Central Synagogue. Mark lives on the Upper West Side with his wife and two-year-old daughter, Abigail. Lissetti uh, and Tessela Stavsky. I did it OK? I want you to know I practiced this. <laughs> Um, is originally from Johannesburg, South Africa. Prior to her conversion to Judaism in April, tw in April um, 24, 2023, she was an active member of the Episcopal Diocese of New York. A longtime saxophone player, Lissetti is happiest when in the pocket. She lives in Brooklyn with her hus husband, Matthew, a high school English teacher and writer. William. William Adams is originally from Lexington, Kentucky. Okay, so Johannesburg, South Africa, Lexington, Kentucky, and has lived in Manhattan since 2005, where he also works as a lawyer. William, his wife, Julie, and daughter, Gabrielle, joined Central in 2015. William participated in Central's Exploring Judaism program in 2020 and converted last year. Jean Pierce de Nobrega, is originally from Portugal and converted to Judaism this year, but began his journey exploring Judaism four years ago. Fun fact, he also serendipitously found out last month that his paternal side has Jewish ancestry. And finally, but last but not least, Pega Bahar Bluestein is originally from Maryland and the child of two Iranian immigrants. She joined Central's conversion class three years ago after her engagement to her now husband of two years, Alex. She lives on the Upper East Side and is currently a fourth year medical student at Hofstra Northwell and pursuing a career in OBGYN. Okay, everybody take a deep breath. Um, our newest Jews. I think I'm gonna stand so that everybody um, can see me and we'll pass the mic around. So. I think I, I, I just love the fact that we're sitting on the sidewalk of Broadway. Um, I, can't, I think because for, for so long, this has been something hidden. And there's something actually um, spectacular about the fact that we want to be seen. We want to be seen having this conversation. And you all have courageously been willing to be seen. Um, and heard in this conversation. So first and foremost, I wanna thank you. 
But now I'm going to ask the question that's on everybody's mind, like, why? Why on earth would you decide to do this? You know, um, there is that, that um, Groucho Marx uh, famous line, why would you want to be a part of a club? Well, how does it go? Why do you want to be a part of a club that I'm in? Um, something like that. Somebody knows this. Date yourself. Okay. What is it about Judaism, Jewish life, Jewish community that compelled you to make this uh, choice? And uh, why don't we start um, with you, Mark? So for, for me, I'll say a couple things. One, um, I grew up in northern New Jersey, which I think is there's a pretty good cultural element to Judaism. Where I grew up, I had a bunch of friends growing up who were Jewish uh, on the edges. I would go to bat mitzvahs, bar mitzvahs, and I kind of had a sense of it. I went to summer camp, again, a kind of Jewish light experience. For some reason, I find myself at Friday night services as a 10-year-old, 12-year-old, 14-year-old at sleepaway camp. Um, and I kind of just gravitated over time, and I don't know if it was just kind of meant to be. I mean, growing up, I, I did all the Christian holidays um, and as back in my mom's family is Episcopalian, my dad's father's father is Jewish, but there really wasn't a guiding light from a religious standpoint. And then fast forward to my kind of life in New York City, I didn't really think about it for a while, but ultimately, um, when I was dating my wife, Zara, uh, we started dating in 2015. I, I checked this in 2016, uh, about a year after we started dating, I started going to the High Holy Days with her family. And, I, and I'm not sure what got me to exactly say yes but I did, uh, and I'm very happy I did. Um, and it just, it was something that, you know, not to get too into the weeds of the story, but my mom had religion as a big part of her life, and she kind of kind of picked and prodded at me. Maybe it's something you should think about, but she didn't want to, uh, she wanted to lead, she wanted to lead a little bit, but not push, because it was ultimately my decision. And I think, frankly, dating my wife was, was the catalyst. Uh, to, to, to kind of going down this journey. And then from there, it just felt very natural along the way. And I'm curious if, if you don't mind my asking, um, was, did you experience um, that kind of push, but not, not pressure from, from your wife or her family? Or was this a decision that you sort of like felt like, was there a discussion about this? Like, I think we should do this. I think it was the sequencing of it, and this is again very personal. But and you know, some people go through the the CJ process very different. We happened to it was very nice. I like that it lined up that we went through Center for Exploring Judaism before we got engaged. And this is, and I don't want to offend people who maybe get engaged and then do it thereafter. But psychologically, to me, it felt like it was more on my terms. Wow. And yeah. I, I was more in control. And I felt fortunate to have that. That's part one. And part two to your question about the pushing and pulling, I actually go back to my mother, frankly. Um, of all the people behind the scenes that were saying this was a good thing, the, the, the impact religion had on her life uh, growing up, how she, and I kind of noticed this as I went through the program, how different aspects of her life, she incorporated religion, but didn't want to talk about it as much. I, and just how helpful, not help, how important it is in raising a family not to say I want to, that was missing from my childhood. And that's, you know, that's, it's, again, it's a very personal thing, but, you know, raising a family, having, having religion be a part of it. Um, it was something as I kind of went through the process and saw things, I saw the benefits, there were negatives to it too. There were things that felt really hard. And you kind of look back on your childhood and maybe some things you're giving up, but um, more than anyone, I have to say my mother was, was probably pushing me. It wasn't, my yeah. wife, my wife's family, I, I give them more credit to creating the opportunity and the awareness. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't, hey, just to be clear, like, we're not getting married unless you convert. No. Well, Sidi, you have the mic there, so. I, I do. Um, as Rabbi Levitt mentioned, I was, I'm from Johannesburg, South Africa, originally, and I was baptized and raised in the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. And my mother comes from a long line of Methodist ministers, many of whom bravely fought against apartheid as members of the African National Congress, um, which many of you might know is the party of Nelson Mandela. And there was a connection in my family that was always made between um, spiritual salvation and political salvation. And so to be a black South African was to be Christian, at least for my family, to be Methodist and to be proud. 
And that's something I always kind of held with me, even though I struggled with many aspects of the church, especially as I grew and started engaging in what I now know to be a long held Jewish tradition of asking questions about who I am and what it is that I believed and what it is that I wanted in my life. I was seeing more and more that the church wasn't maybe aligned with those values, but that I felt a tremendous weight and guilt, um, perhaps from um, the sacrifices that many of my family had made for my freedom to even be able to make those choices. Um, I stepped away from the church for a while. Um, and when I moved to New York, I was looking for community. And so found an Episcopal parish and uh, was actively involved. And then COVID um, hit and we can no longer go to a brick and mortar building. And now suddenly church was Zoom. And without the community aspect, the friendships, the like-minded people I was meeting, the conversations I was having after services, I didn't feel that connection. And so I really began thinking about what it is that I wanted, what sort of, uh, what I wanted religion to be and faith to be. And at the time I was dating my now husband, Matthew, who's sitting there in the fourth row. Um, and uh, I started engaging and asking questions and discussions with him and we'd have hour long, hours long conversations about Judaism and religion and it opened up what had always been really closed off to me. Um, the peoplehood and the history and the faith that is Judaism for me in a way that was really beautiful. And I, there was one day I remember just deep in the pandemic kind of misery, I was folding my laundry and I was listening to an episode of On Being with Krista Tippett. And she was in conversation with Rabbi Lawrence Kushner, who is a reform rabbi who has written a lot and spoken a lot about the Jewish mystical tradition and Kabbalah. And he said something that I think might have really changed my life and maybe the future of how I was able to see God and a relationship with, with God. And Rabbi Kushner said that um, God is like the ocean and all of humankind are the waves. And in order to understand the ocean, something that is not fully knowable to us or understandable to us, we study the waves and the tides and if we think of God in that way as the ocean and all of us as the waves, we are able to influence um, the inner workings really of God, but we are also able to see in all of us, in our fellow man, in the earth, in the world, God, and engage in this deep way. And having struggled for so long with this kind of hierarchy in the you know Christian doctrine of us down here and God up there and struggling with that and realizing that I could have this deep and personal relationship in through Judaism with God. It kind of just changed my life. And at that time, my husband and I, my now husband and I had spoken about marriage and he had shared the wish that we would raise Jewish children and didn't pressure me in any way, but express that. And so I wanted to learn more. What is this, this faith? Why, what, what does it mean to raise Jewish children? And so I found the Center for Exploring Judaism and started taking classes with Rabbi April Davis, who is now since left the synagogue. And it wasn't until a few uh, months into the class that I decided and learned more about Judaism that I decided, wow, I, I wanna convert. I don't just want to be um, a participant in my family and raising Jewish children, but I wanna be Jewish too. And so I'm very grateful for the Center for Exploring Judaism and for all of the questions that um, all of my fellow uh, Jews by choice asked in that class because um, it opened up a whole new world to me. And can you say a, a word about your family? Are they, there, are they all still in, they're in Johannesburg? They're here, they're everywhere. And what was their reaction to, to this decision? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I have one brother, he lives in the United Kingdom in Scotland, but otherwise my whole family is still in South Africa. And I think the, the main thing when I shared that I wanted to become Jewish was confusion. Um, <laughs> uh, it may be a very different um, experience from growing up in North Jersey. We, I didn't grow up among a lot of Jewish people um, and my family didn't really understand much about it. And so they were able to learn with me um, more about Judaism. And I think that now they fully support and accept my decision. Uh, why don't we pass the mic to Jean Pierce. Hi guys. Um, well, I'll try to keep this brief because it's been happening for a while. Uh, I'm from Portugal. I grew up Christian 
and basically the whole nine yards, I mean, you name it. I was part of the choir. My father volunteered as a carpenter in the church. Uh, so basically, until I did my first communion, I was very involved as a you know Christian. And then I remember clearly, next day after my conversion, my parents were like, okay, here's the gift to the Ferraris. This is your faith. You keep going with the religion or not. We did our duty as like parents. And uh, the reality was actually that me and my family kind of were like drifting away from the faith and the religion. So I later moved to New York City and uh, I was always finding like that void. I was like, you know, I, I need something more spiritual. I was not very aligned with the like Christians beliefs. There were a lot of things like abortion, you know, very controversial stuff, but like just didn't really align with my uh, lifestyle. So I went to NYU for acting and basically all my friends were Jewish. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, and uh, so yeah, basically I grew up obviously like in, in the college uh, talking with them and how to, and I was like literally day after day like, wow, this really aligns with my way of living. This is, this is how I think of life. Like, I, like this is like, you know, you guys have a pretty cool religion there. <laughs> How's that wait going? how many people think we have a cool religion <laughs> that's a lot of no that's higher than i would have expected <laughs> it is so interesting to see our tradition from the eyes of others isn't it keep going on that cool religion yeah, yeah. i think you're making it cooler jean pierce oh, just to be thank you thank you uh but yeah uh, so i i became very interested on it and then i was like well you know what when i finished college I would look into conversion. Like I would like to really like dive in, do more research. But you know, I was like a student, part-time working, so I was very busy. So I just kind of like delayed until I graduated. And then I met uh, my girlfriend at the time. Uh, we started dating, and on our second date, literally, she told me, "Hey, no pressure, but like if this works out, my kids are Jewish." <laughs> second date. <laughs> second date. Literally, but um, but funny. Funny for her to know, like I didn't tell her, but I was also planning to convert. But I, I did not say that because just like you said, second date, right? <laughs> uh, so um, Beatrice, uh, she she was attending currently in the conversion program at Central when we started dating. So I took her to classes, I went outside. So we kind of went through like the whole process a little bit together. Like, you know, I, we lived together and we celebrated high holidays together for three years. And then, uh, you know, COVID happened. Uh, we survived COVID together. And then, you know, when the world reopening again, I was like, you know what, like, I want to convert into Judaism. And um, long story short, I did my project because I wanted to find out how was like Jewish life in Portugal since I grew up like in such a like Christian circle. Uh, the more I dig, I find out like, wow, like, you know, Portugal at some point was 20% Judaism. So I was like, wow, this is pretty interesting. Um, I wanted to do some more research about it. And uh, I later find out, find out with the help of somebody of this community that on my father's side, I am Jewish descended. So I just find that out like a month and a half ago. So uh, yeah, it was kind of like all meant to be that it all made sense those years in NYU that I said, you know what, this like, it, this makes so much sense. Like I totally agree with this. Like I don't agree with this, I agree with that. So it was kind of like meant to be in a way. Go ahead, William. Um, so I grew up a uh, Protestant uh, in the Christian church, uh, Disciples of Christ, which is affiliated with the United Church of Christ. And I was baptized um, when I was 11 or 12 because that's what you did. Uh, you, when you were 11 or 12, you would um, you know, become a member of the church. And I went through a, a program. And I, and I remember now all, all I could really recall about the program was the, the donuts and the foosball. There was no sort of learning and education, and there, at least that I retained uh, at, at 11 or 12, because it was just part of the process, and that's what you were supposed to be, not what you were supposed to be doing. Um, and so I, but it, I came out of that not really feeling a strong connection to Christianity, um, and, and was basically, re, I would say, religious uh, neutral for quite some time. Um, I met my now wife um, my first week of, of college at, at Cornell, and um, she was not the first uh, Jew that I had met. I mean, I certainly knew other Jews, but certainly the first one that I became close with. And sort of that was 2000, uh, I'm sorry, that was not 2000, that was 1997. Um, 
and um, sort of over over the years sort of had progressively more and more touchstones uh, with Judaism. We got married in 2007, um, actually at Cornell, and could not find a, a rabbi to marry us. Uh, I, I um, we we searched and we looked and sort of as um, you know. Rabbi Bookdahl was speaking about in, in her sermon, just the barriers to the um, interfaith um, uh, marriage uh, was was challenging. Um, and uh, but we uh, we got married, and then I spent um, a lot of time, sort of, um, I guess, ultimately living Jewishly without being Jewish. I we would go to services together. Once we joined Central in 2015, we um, would celebrate the holidays together and the holidays uh, with my wife's family. Um, and so I just got progressively more and more comfortable um, with Judaism. Um, and in uh, 2015, when we joined Central, my daughter um, started in the LCLJ program. And so in about 2019, um, she was beginning the uh, B'nai Mitzvah process. Um, and it was at that point where I decided that I wanted to learn really more about Judaism, like formally, to sort of have my formal education. I picked up a lot along the way, but not probably gotten the fundamentals and the, and the basics. Uh, and since uh, she was going through that process, I wanted to as well. So I reached out to Rabbi Rubin and started at the uh, Center for Exploring Judaism. Um, my wife joined me for those classes, and that was in the spring of 2020. We started, started out uh, in person, transitioned uh, to, uh, to Zoom. Um, and I, I came out of that, and I didn't come in thinking I was going to convert, um, but I came out of that class um, being open to conversion. I thought if any religion was for me, it was it was Judaism, and um, but I paused. I didn't, um, you know, with, with COVID and things were sort of uncertain and unsettled, and I um, I stepped back, and then as we were beginning the year to going in to Gabrielle becoming um, a bat mitzvah, there was another gathering. Um, Rabbi Bookdahl and other the other clergy got all the I guess the class of uh, bnei mitzvah um, together, and we were there as a, as family. And I decided this was, in that moment, I, I just connected, resonated things that were being said, um, that this was the time. I really wanted um, to be you know, closer, closer to my family, fully part of my daughter's um, uh, bat mitzvah ceremony. I mean, Central's very inclusive and very encouraging of, of, inter, of interfaith families. And I always felt very welcome here, which I think made it very easy to make the, make the conversion. But I could be fully, you know, fully present and fully part of the, of this, of the ceremony and the service. And so uh, ultimately re-engaged uh, with Rabbi Rubin and uh, did some independent study and then, uh, and then ultimately formally converted uh, about a year ago. And do you still have ties in Lexington? Is your family there? And did they have a reaction to this? Sure. Some of my family is there. Um, that was one thing that actually did hold me back in 2020. I mean, even though I'm, I was like, you know, 40 something, I was thinking, what are my parents, you know, how are my parents going to react to this? Um, and then over the course of the, you know, the two years while I was sort of thinking about, uh, thinking about what I wanted to do and ultimately making the decision, I decided that that's silly. I should do what I, I want to do for me and not worry about what, you know, my As parents. we all get to that My, moment, my parents right? might think. So it, it took me a little while. Um, <laughs> but but uh, they were actually totally uh, fine with this. Uh, they were very supportive and are very supportive. They've been you know, very happy um, to, you know, they knew that we were going to raise Gabrielle Jewish and, Jew and, and she's obviously been, um, been raised Jewish and been part of the central uh, family for quite some time and they were and they understood that and um, were very welcoming and happy for me um, to do this um, and did not see and my, I remember my, my dad very distinctly said I you know I don't see this as a rejection of of, uh, of us and what they had and how I had been brought up and I appreciated him saying that um, and it certainly wasn't and it wasn't meant to be um, it was just the sort of the next step in my in my spiritual journey and Pega um, I think I have sort of a similar story to the first panelist. I grew up, uh, both my parents um, immigrated from Iran right before I was born, and I still have my grandparents and family living in Iran, but I grew up um, having Jewish friends and family friends my entire life. My best friends my whole life have been Jewish, so I've been celebrating the Jewish holidays since I can remember. And my Were you invited to the bat mitzvah, oh, or I so wasn't invited to oh, the bat I was, mitzvah? Oh, I went to probably like 30 bat mitzvahs, bar bat mitzvahs in the seventh grade. And so I also went to a very Jewish high school in Pikesville, Maryland, and then I went to Wash U for college, which also has a very large Jewish community. So I this was a part of my life and my parents' life as well um, for quite some time. But I think like most immigrant families, as part of assimilation, we did celebrate 
the American holidays. We celebrated Christmas um, and sort of, you know. Although your family's not Christian. No, my grandparents are Muslim. Um, and But I think, I think many immigrants can probably relate when you come to America as part of the assimilation process to sort of do as everyone else is sort of doing. Um, so then I went to college and I met my husband, Alex, who's right there as well. Um, and I always say when I met him, it was like putting glasses on and being able to see because it was the first time where you, I had just truly connected with the person. And I think it's part of the story as well, where I really believe that the Persian culture and the Jewish culture could not be more similar. And so having met him and realizing how similar our backgrounds were, even though on paper there might, you know, identify as two different things or certainly politically the two countries are, couldn't be you know, more opposed. I think the life that and childhood that we both had was very similar. And so I think in meeting him and, and sort of falling in love with him, it was sort of natural for us. I knew that we wanted to have Jewish children and have a Jewish home. And so when I made the decision to convert, it was really just adding to my life. And I think one of the best parts of the story for us is, I think when I met Alex, he was in a fraternity in college. I think, you know, celebrating Jew like Jewish holidays were probably not top of his priority list. <laughs> But I think when we, you know, went through this process together, I think it re-engaged him as well. And I think that was really special um, for us and for his parents and I think for our future life. And your family? And my family, I think, um, like I said, it's just so funny. Like my parents' best friends my whole life were the Sindlers and the Feldmans. Like it was just, a, it was just our life for a long time. And so I think it was just natural. And I, I think ultimately they loved Alex so much that for them it was, they couldn't, they were just so happy for us. And I think they just are all in, like my mom will do things for Hanukkah now. And I think it's, um, they were really supportive, but I think it was because they loved Alex so much. It was, couldn't have been easier. I want to follow up on this point yeah. um, and invite um, others to, to jump in and I won't call on you just if you'd like to answer. Do you think that, um, that your, your family life now is more connected to Judaism than it might have been had your partner married somebody else, married somebody who wasn't Jew who was Jewish. Do you think and you know what I'm asking? It has your the intensity of this experience changed the nature of your family in the way that Pega described Alex as being Jewish. Is that fair? Um, but but not, you know, deeply engaged. That Resonate for any of you? Go ahead, uh, oh, go so, ahead. John, well, John yeah. Pierce, and then and then William. Uh, well, on my side, uh, my girlfriend's family um, they had like traditions, and those traditions were like dying because like pretty much like her grandfather kind of like stopped going to like services and things like that. So we are picking up on those. So that's how we changed the family. Um, dynamic in that aspect because like we are literally doing it how they do it like for example a weird one that we do have today for John Kapoor when we finally break the, uh, break the fast we eat fried chicken and that's what and we've been doing that for like almost five years now oh yeah impressive yeah impressive yes so I think like, it was sort of mutually reinforcing like Julie was very um, interested obviously in, in exposing me to Judaism but at my at my own pace and I was also then you know interested in learning things that she might not have uh, been interested in or that doing having experiences that she you know um, like we went to um, I think we went to Israel with with the central in 2019 which was just a, on a family trip which was just a wonderfully um, moving and profoundly um, just a significant experience for us as a, as a family um, and I was the main proponent, at least initially, of, of going on the going on the trip. Um, and I don't know that we would have done that if you know, if not for me. And so I, I think even as I was along going along my journey, um, you know, I, I think we helped us to do things we might not have otherwise done. Go ahead. Um, I sort of lost my train of thought now. Um, I think I was just going to say one other thing is Alex had grown up conservative Jewish. His whole life had gone to Hebrew school and had this like pretty amazing foundational knowledge in, in Judaism. And I think, um, I totally lost my train of thought, but I just wanted to say that I think it, what was also, sp the question was, can you tell About me? whether um, your life looks different as a result of the fact that 
Alex married somebody who wasn't born Jewish. Yeah, so I think, he, so he had this sort of amazing foundation, but what that looked like in the life he was living every day, I think had a very minimal impact, like it was very minimally being practiced in his daily life. So I think now that we are both sort of on the same page and have agreed on the things that we want, how Judaism to impact our daily life, I, I do think it's, I, I'm, I mean, I'm not sure what would happen if he had ended up with someone else, but I, I think that this made it more um, a part of his everyday life. Um, may I add something? Sure. Um, um, my husband is what uh, Rabbi Davis, who oversaw my conversion, describes as a, a, a bagels in New York Times do, do so <laughs> a really culturally, um, you know, a cultural identity in Judaism, even though um, he went through um, his bar mitzvah and Hebrew school and all the rest of that. And so I, he likes to joke that I've made him so much more religious than was ever, he ever thought was possible. We're lighting candles, we're observing holidays, um, and we are committed to having a Jewish home. So I think that through my conversion and through him coming to all of my classes at the Center for Exploring Judaism with me and being so part of that journey, it did, I think, set us and said him, I'm speaking for him, but I'm looking over there to see what's okay. Um, I could I call on these people, <laughs> but I won't. On perhaps a different path than um, might, might, would, might, would have been possible had he found another Bagels in New York Times Jew. And yet, the Bagels and New York Times are so good, right? I mean, please. Yeah, I would just, two things. One, I think I just reinforce, um, going to the Center for Exploring Judaism class together as a couple, I think I didn't realize how profound an impact that would have on our relationship. And it kind of, doing it together, not me doing it by myself, where I kind of go off, do something for six months, come back, okay, what do you want to do about it? Versus going through it week by week, going to class together, I forget if it was every Tuesday or Wednesday night for an hour or two, the same group of people doing it together. People, frankly, people also in a communal element, you, I don't think we would have otherwise have met in New York City. As much as it's a big city, you kind of live in your own narrow lanes, kind of no new friends mantra, which I think is, is terrible. This was an excellent opportunity for that. Um, but I think more important, it just it reinforced us in terms of fast forward. That's, that was almost a springboard our, our life, our, our Jewish life together in terms of creating traditions where, you know, you don't default, hey, this is what Zara did growing up. This is what Zara did growing up. Or, by the way, she went to part of her upbringing, went to an Orthodox synagogue. So different experience but you know it, it's it's kind of what are we what are the memories we're making together as a family what are the traditions we're setting how are we raising our children's constantly questioning that and you know it, there could be little elements where i least expect it where things from my upbringing are, are brought into the fold it doesn't have to be so rigid uh taking base of that i totally agree with you going together with your partner in classes is like tremendously different that doesn't uh, Rabbi Ruben told me this that I didn't know, but like we were the first couple that we both converted that went to class together because uh, my now fiance, uh, she went the first time while we started dating. And then when I did it, she kind of rejoined because her class got cut off in half because of COVID like via Zoom. And uh, we experienced like so many questions challenging together and Rabbi Crystal was like obviously so amazing answering all of them. And we saw their partners that necessarily didn't want to convert but they were just to support and learn how that would like look like. So like maybe they convert, maybe they didn't convert, but like I would definitely recommend if anybody here is planning to do those classes, if they can invite their partner, it's like a tremendous experience. Let's stay on the Center for Exploring Judaism. As you heard last night or this morning, if you heard Rabbi Bookdahl's sermon, you know that Central Synagogue is actually the only synagogue um, that I'm aware of, and I've spent about a year and a half studying this, um, that that has created such a robust, um, well-resourced, and and I and I want to say this is a commitment on the part of the synagogue because um, many 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 synagogues around the country would like to do this kind of work. Um, they don't have the resources to do it, and they don't see a return on the investment directly to the synagogue, right? Um, Central Synagogue has made a commitment to the Center for Exploring Judaism for the Jewish people, right? Not for Central Synagogue. And it's a really important thing to, to um, bear in mind because many, many, many of you, um, hopefully many of you will join Central Synagogue, but many more of you will not. 
you will join other synagogues, you will go other places, you won't even necessarily stay in New York. And the commitment of the synagogue to do this work is, um, is extraordinary and unprecedented. And I guess what I, I want to ask, in addition to, I'd like to hear more about the experience of the class was, how hard was it to, for you to find it? Once you decided to, that you wanted to do this, was it like you Googled, uh, I'm looking to convert and, and out pop Central Synagogue? Seriously, like how'd you find Central? I found it, I was in, we were at Shabbat services and I was looking at the, the program that day or the, the bulletin and there was some, and there, there was an announcement It said the next, you know, cohort of exploring Judaism is starting. Um, in so a you few, were already members so of the synagogue. We were mem members. Ah, okay. And, but I hadn't actually at that point heard of um, the Center for Exploring Judaism. Um, now I keep hearing it, all, I, I keep hearing about it, I guess, because maybe I'm more attuned to it. Um, but I just picked up on it then. And the name, though, was what resonated with me, exploring Judaism, because at that point, I, you know, wasn't looking to convert. I didn't think that I would be converting, but I was like, I definitely wanted to explore Judaism. Um, and so I, I saw, saw that and signed up. Anybody have a hard time? Yeah, go ahead, Pega. Oh, I, I didn't have a hard time. I was just going to say that I, um, I'm not sure if other people consider reform versus other types of conversions. And so I was just going to speak to that. Because Please. My husband did grow up um, conservative, and so I think actually we had sort of synagogue shopped prior to finding Central. We had actually gone to some classes for conversion at another um, more conservative synagogue. So I think we sort of explored all the different options and then found Central. We had been to services at Central with some family friends that were members as guests, um, and it was just sort of a natural like aha fit um, once we ended up there. But I, I don't know if other people had a similar experience. Um, I would like to add that the project really stays true to its name. This is not conversion class. This is exploring Judaism, and that's really what it was. Like we were talking topics, we will give our opinions, we will have questions, and we will discuss. And I saw people in that class that end up converting, and people that did not, but they learn more about it. So the title is perfect. Yeah, I was. Uh, I'll raise my hands. Probably the most naive person as to what this all entailed. Um, we, my wife and I went, I think we reached out, it was in late 2017, early 2018, to, to Rabbi Bookdahl to get coffee. We go to the Starbucks across the street from Central. We have like Justin Bieber Otherwise music. Otherwise known as our office. Yep, Justin Bieber music blaring in the black background. And then I was like, oh, I'm thinking about it, converting. What could this mean? And she, she put me in touch with Rabbi Rubin, who then helped place me into the class, uh, my wife with, with Rabbi Davis. but. I didn't, uh, back to my point about being so naive, I, I think, I don't want to say I couldn't find it, but I didn't realize how involved it would be, but I, in hindsight, I could not be happier with how involved and thoughtful it was and how well it was constructed. And I don't mean to be, you know, be a promoter here, but I think if it's, if it's something you're going to do, you know, reflecting on this in hindsight, you might as well go all in on it uh, versus just like the mail order approach, which I'm going to look myself in the mirror. Like I, maybe my mind was going in that direction where it was going to be a handful of meetings you go do something okay done it was anything but that which i think is best for all parties involved we did a study of um rabbis throughout the united states just to ask them the question how many conversions are you doing um how do you do them what is your feeling about them we we got a, we have about 600 responses right now and what was fascinating was they have all seen an uptick since COVID. It's a little hard to know how much of it is, although it's interesting that all of you reference COVID, but that's not so surprising. Um, to some extent, what rabbis are reporting is that um, people who are home had an opportunity to zoom into services and didn't just and didn't have to actually physically go. And one of the things we heard from people who are exploring Judaism is uncertainty about going to a synagogue. Am I gonna be welcome there? I don't know how, I don't know how, which way the book opens. I don't know whether, why, what to do. So I'm not gonna do it because it's just too intimidating. And what happened during COVID was you could do it without doing it, right? You could just be part of it. And as a result, the experience was un, 
um, encumbered by people's anxiety. And they just, um, and many, many, many of them went on to Central Synagogue's um, uh, Zoom, but others as well. And what rabbis are now reporting is that people are, are coming into their offices wanting to know more about this um, because of that experience. Um, they saw a kind of joyful, connected uh, Jewish life, and, and they really wanted to be part of it. And what the rabbis are now, you know, reporting to us is, get me some help, because we're not able to do this work at this level. It's interesting um, that, that your position, Mark, is like, it was better that it was intense, right? The rabbis want to do that work, but in addition to all the other things that they have to do, it's really, it's really, really hard to do. I want to ask, um, what, since your conversion, have you found most meaningful about Jewish life? What is it that you're doing that you weren't doing before that, that has actually made you feel like, wow, this was really a good call? Um, well, I'll go first. I, I feel uh, an immense feel of pride and responsibility at the same time. I mean, this is a tradition that's been going on for, you know, generations and generations. And, uh, you know, be able myself to be called now a Jew is like that sense of pride and responsibility. For me, there's kind of like the macro and the micro. The macro is your point. There's a there's a community element to it where you just you kind of feel like after all those years and going to services and high holy days, but just you, you feel more into it in a good way, and you don't you don't feel like you're forced in any way. Just to be clear here, that's kind of the macro. The micro, I think, the the real aha moment for me is when my my daughter was born. We had the uh, the baby naming, uh, and I feel like that that was the moment where I think if I like you have you kind of look back on decisions you make if i had not converted i think that would have been the exact moment i would have regretted it and it's a little bit of a selfish comment to make but it's was kind of the aha moment where I, like i've really you know that we're building a family together this is a real monumental moment for us um and it just just felt right and was your baby naming at central correct uh -huh. yes was Eddie, did you want to oh sorry yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll just add uh, that um, since becoming Jewish, I think so many things that I'd already been doing, um, I was able to see with the new new light. I think that um, it isn't so much maybe um, Jews that are different, it's Judaism that's different. And so things that I was already, this fanatical obsession with justice, this idea of sadaka, this idea of setting things apart from other things, and we have that every week with Shabbat, um, just took on a whole new uh, light and uh, meaning, I'd say, in my life since I've converted. And so um, having all of those moments, those rituals, so many of them we can do in the home and do together, and uh, engaging in these Jewish traditions, I think has changed the things that I was already doing, given them more weight, but it's also opened me up to so many other things. So I don't know, that doesn't really answer your question, but I think oh, it, it does. Okay. It does. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I was probably, you know, I was definitely living Jewishly before I converted, but I think just to um, touch on sort of the, the ritual aspect, I, I think that I would not, I, at my daughter's uh, bat mitzvah, it was just the most wonderful sense of just like connection that I had with her and that I had with my wife and I had that with everyone that was there and I definitely would not have felt that way if I hadn't have converted I mean central was like I said always very inclusive and very welcoming and I ne never made me feel othered or outside or any way but I don't think I would have had that just that feeling from the inside that I did in that moment um, if I hadn't gone gone ahead and converted uh, and it really reaffirmed that I had made the right decision uh, for myself um, and for my family. And I was so happy and I'm so happy now that I did. And then I think um, just to add something I don't think spoken about, I'm a medical student, so I spend a lot of my time in the hospitals and I every day. Not sleeping. I spoke to her at seven in the morning because that was the only time she was free. 
but I think um, anybody who is in healthcare or healthcare adjacent, there's a lot of death and a lot of illness, and I think a lot of sort of end of life events. And I think for me, actually, the biggest addition that Judaism has given me is a structured reflection and sort of structured, whether you believe in God or don't believe in God, but sort of a, a belief in something bigger than you. And I think when you spend, I spend every day sort of seeing these very sad things, having this belief that there's something greater and something bigger has um, given me a lot of solace. And I think people um, might relate to that. And it's been, that's been per sort of the biggest thing for me. Okay, I wanna get to the hard question. What's been hard? What's been challenging? What has made you mad, if anything? What has made you confused? Go ahead, Becca, you've got the mic. Okay, um, I think one thing for me is that's been challenging is my friends or people in my life who are born Jewish and then watching them sort of take it for granted. And I, I don't mean that in any sort of negative way because people can choose um, however it's meaningful to them to practice Judaism, but I think I sort of feel like, you know, um, we made this choice. I like am hosting 10 people for Rosh Hashanah. Like, you know, it would, I think just not to, it's a privilege, I think, to be Jewish. And I think not that for, for that not to be forgotten. And sometimes that can be a little frustrating. Um, yeah. Um, I feel that uh, Judaism in America, especially in New York, is very Ashkenormative. And everybody has in their mind an idea. Everybody's familiar with this term, Ashkenormative. Okay. Okay. Ashkenormative means that we we preference, we authorize, or maybe over authorize Jews who come from an Ashkenazic background, um, as opposed to Jews who come from a Sephardic background or in, in any other kind of background. Thank you. Um, and so there is a, a person, a, a Jewish person looks a certain way in someone's mind, has a certain name, um, has ex certain experiences. And um, I found that in being in Jewish spaces, I'm often always treated as though I am a guest or that I do not belong because I am not who somebody thinks of in their mind as a Jewish person, regardless of whether or not I converted. But um, that's been difficult to walk into rooms that oftentimes look like this, where there is no face that looks like mine, and to try to stake a claim to um, my faith in this religion um, and to, to belong. So I think that I've often been, I don't think, I've been met with a lot of suspicion and confusion, even among the Jewish community. And that's, um, it's been painful and very sad um, to have to walk into every room and say, I belong here. I am Jewish when somebody's greeting me or asking if I'm lost or who, whose guest I am. To have to, to say that is, is difficult. So I think this, the same point of people might take a lot of being Jewish for granted might take also being able to belong or be accepted for granted. And that's a challenge that every convert might have if your last name doesn't match or your skin color doesn't match or your accent doesn't match or whatever it is. Um, it's difficult and that's been hard. And so I'm glad that this discussion is happening. So I hope that next time somebody that in your mind doesn't match the description, you might assume they're Jewish and welcome them. So we, we look now at these numbers and they really are changing. Um, Judaism is becoming um, dramatically more diverse and, um, and it puts pressure on the tribal nature of the Jewish community, right? What we, perhaps because of our history, perhaps because of anti-Semitism, perhaps because of the DNA of, of being oppressed, we tend to be um, xenophobic and um, we like our secret handshakes, right? Whatever they are that tell us, oh, your last name is Levy, right? I know, I know who you are, right? I know you're one of mine. That's been in, you know, we, we talk about um, Judar, right? We have sort of Jewish radar and we think we know and we're wrong. And we're actually more wrong now than we have ever been. And I, I hope everybody heard that very honest um, and brave comment that you made and I appreciate it. And I, I asked the panelists to be honest because I think if we're going to change um, and embrace these stories and these extraordinary people, we're gonna have to get clear 
about about just how to do that in a warm and welcoming way and not just can I help you whose guest you are right which is very friendly we're all you know we've gotten to the friendly part we just haven't taken it to the next level okay more hard anything hard go ahead yeah I'll just go I think it kind of was to my comments before it just goes back to the family comment I mean it's you look back I'm, I'm an only child you look back on your upbringing how your parents raised you everything was intentional you worry that this decision they take it personally it's a slight for them and you know how are they going to feel about it and then you kind of fast forward it's kind of like what happens with the holidays and you're kind of taking they think you're basically putting that chapter of your life behind you and moving to a new one um, when that is not the case and i think you need to be honest about that you need to be upfront about it you need to have honest conversations with yourself uh, with your spouse with your family um you know just to to make sure that like look there's no cookie cutter answer here i mean it is tough i mean like yeah like growing up did i like the smell of a christmas tree in our house yeah i did um and kind of how do you come to terms with that going forward where maybe that's not always going to be the case and maybe you go to mimi and pop-pop's house for christmas every year but you know we're eternal beings at some point you know what happens are we going to pick up that or is it just going to die over time um and that's a tough thing to do and i think but there's little things you can do like um to tie it together and I, I didn't mention this before like my father's father was was jewish um one of three brothers and his name was norman and so when we came to like you know making an ode to my father who particularly he decided he had an opportunity growing up does he want to be jewish does he not does he want to go to hebrew school he chose not to in all fairness i was given the same opportunity when i was growing up because growing up in north jersey all my friends were going to hebrew school when i was 10 years old do you try it out Eh, not for me. Wait, somebody asked you asked you if you wanted to go to your. I went. I went. I went to class for a day. Yeah. For a day. Yeah, for, for after school from four to six p.m. A Hebrew school, school dropout. Yeah. For, <laughs> okay. The the one the one thing I, I the story the part of this I love so much is my we actually were looking into my grandfather's name Norman his new Jewish name uh, was Nahum and that was the Jewish name I took. So it's kind of an ode to my my father, my father's lineage, I, it, mm. and I it, it feels good about that. I don't know. Hard, William. Nothing. Everything's been no. just no. great. No, I, I feel that um, I don't know. I, I've learned a lot, but I have so much more to learn, and I know everyone does. But I also feel like I like this sense of well, you know, did I learn enough to really be Jewish? Uh, you know, am I is and so I have this sort of sense of I don't know perhaps incompleteness or i mean um and um so I, I guess it's it's a it's a work in progress and that's um you know something that uh, uh you know i will continue along my my exploration but um you know it's, it's not com it's not complete for sure i mean if it makes you feel better i grew up jewish i went to hebrew school i went to jewish summer camps i went to israel i went to rabbinical school for five years and i don't know enough and I think none of us do because as that wonderful image from from um, Rabbi Kushner, you know, it's a vast ocean. They talk about the Talmud as a sea, right? There, there's no way to know enough. Um, being on the journey is is really um, is really what it's about. Please join me in thanking this extraordinary panel. You I, I think I think we can all agree that the Jewish people is stronger for your being part of it. And we're really lucky. Shana Tova, Gmar Tov, have an easy fast. If you're fasting, services are at four o'clock. So you have a couple minutes. Thanks, guys. Thank